Welcome! In this video I am going to show you how to obtain the Schmidt factor and the resolved shear stress for a face-centered cubic slip system. So as we know the face-centered cubic crystal has 12 independent slip systems which means that uh, we have four slip planes which is uh, one 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 slip plane in different directions and uh, within each slip planes we have uh, three one one zero directions in, in different directions so I will show you how to use this uh, information to calculate the resolved shear stress on a given slip plane so basically we, we just draw a cylinder to illustrate what we will need so we have this cylinder our uh, piece of material and then we apply tensile force on this cylinder and uh, this tensile force is acting on a cross-sectional area A so basically we have this setup and uh, when the material deforms this deformation will happen on a certain slip system and then uh, the slip system itself uh, basically let me show you will be a plane let's say in uh, in this cylinder and then we can see that on the plane we have some uh, force and then this plane has its normal vector and yeah let's show this is perpendicular to the plane and on the plane we have the slip uh, direction like this so let me just make this also into uh, a vector so we have f and uh, this is the applied uh, stress let's call it or force and then uh, we have n which is the normal to the slip plane normal to the slip plane and then we have d which is the slip direction so this n is uh, basically this 111 uh, family and then this d it's also a vector three component vector is this 110 family and then the applied stress sorry it's also a vector uh, can be anything but uh, in our case we will be using let's say one zero zero it's a direction so what we do here is uh, basically we want to calculate the resolved shear stress on this plane so on this uh, plane which is basically its uh, resolved stress is uh, the shear force along the slip direction let's call it uh, small f and uh, it's uh, divided by the area of the slip plane let's call it like small a and then uh, we can further continue to uh, calculate these f so basically the shear force along the slip direction is equal to the tensile force uh, multiplied by cosine lambda I will tell you what is this in a moment and then this is divided by the A which is the cross-sectional area of the specimen divided by cosine phi so the cosine lambda is basically the angle between the force and the direction so let's call this lambda 
and uh, let me write it somewhere. So we have lambda, which is the angle between the force and the slip direction. And then we have the phi, which is the force, or which is the angle between the force and the normal to the slip plane. So now as we know these uh, things, we can uh, simplify this equation. So what we have here basically is f over a times uh, cosine lambda times cosine phi, right? So f over a, we know that this is basically sigma, so it's a uh, stress. And then uh, this term, cosine lambda times cosine phi, is the Schmidt factor. So basically what we have at the end is tau rs is equal to sigma times m. So once again, this is the tensile stress and uh, it's often megapascal and then this small m is the Schmidt factor which has no units uh, yeah so whenever we want to calculate the resolved shear stress within a slip system uh, we have to know the Schmidt factor so basically the geometry of the uh, slip system and we have to know the tensile stress and if we know these things then uh, we can uh, calculate the resolved shear stress and then this can give us a lot of information uh, about the deformation of the material so in the next uh, slide I will show you a worked example how this can be calculated for a simple uh, FCC system. So first I would like to show you how the slip system look, looks like. So I just try to draw a cube here. So this is our small unit cube. And then this axis is the z axis here. Let's call this as x axis and let's call this y axis. This will be important uh, to define the tensile stress. So let me go through the details again. So we have a slip plane, which is now Uh, from the 111 family but uh, this notation is actually used for family which means that it can be anything uh, within the 111 uh, directions so any kind of combination so if you want to be precise then you use this kind of curved uh, parenthesis so the slip plane is the 111 slip plane and then we have a slip direction as well and if we make it into a family this is 110 so again this bracket is uh, telling you that it is showing a family but we need to have a defined direction so if you have a certain direction and not a family you use the square brackets for uh, slip directions and then we also have a tensile stress and we know that it has a certain direction 100 and uh, also it has a magnitude 200 megapascal 
at least in our case. So the slip plane is 111, which if you know the Miller indices, it's very easy to identify. But uh, basically, we take 1, 1, and 1 on x, y, z, and we connect those things. So basically, this triangle is our slip plane. And then uh, in this triangle, we have three uh, directions, which are the slip directions. So one is in this direction, one is in this direction, and the other is in this direction. So we have one slip plane, three directions. And in total, FCC structure has four slip planes, and each slip plane has three directions, so in total that's how you get the 12 indi uh, independent uh, slip systems. So, this will be N, and this is the D, as direction, and uh, yeah, this was the sigma. So, let's make it into more simple. So we have the plane here. So this is the normal of the plane, which is perpendicular. And then uh, there is a direction on this plane. Uh, these are perpendicular to each other as well. And, uh, and there is a force or stress acting on this uh, plane, which is sigma now. So we have two angles which are interesting for us. One is between the stress and the plane, or the normal to the plane. We will call this phi. And then there is another between, there is another angle between the stress and the slip direction, and we call it lambda. And since we have vectors, it's very easy to calculate the angles between them in this case, so basically the cosine angles. So we will obtain cosine phi and uh, cosine lambda in this uh, exercise. And it's, it's very, very simple. So basically, if you have a vector, um, let's start it with cosine phi. And if you have two vectors, so the cosine phi is basically for this uh, certain case is the dot product of the vector of the stress and the vector of the normal to the plane. And this is divided by the magnitude, it, this is divided by the products of the magnitude of these two vectors. So I guess you know how to calculate the dot products, but if you don't know, I write it up to you. So basically the uh, product of the first element of the two vectors plus the second element plus uh, the third. And then this is divided by the magnitude. which is very simple, first element squared, second element squared, and third element squared, times square root of the first element squared plus second element squared plus, sorry, third element squared, right? So let's calculate this with numbers. So, sigma 1, so this is 1, and this is uh, 1 as well, so this will be 1. Sigma 2 is 0, let's make it like this, and uh, n2 is 1, but this is 0, and then this is 0 again, and this is 1, so this is 0. And then we have these things. So 
1 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared. This is 1. 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, right? This is 3. So what we have here is 1 over square root of 3. So therefore cosine phi equals to uh, roughly equals to 0 0.577 and uh, this is roughly if you uh, calculate the inverse cosine of this uh, number then this is roughly 55 degrees it's a rounded number and then we can do the same uh, exercise for cosine lambda I will not go into details this much, but basically what we have is sigma times d in this case. So the dot product of these two vectors. And the same applies here. So the magnitude of the sigma vector and the d vector. And this will be basically the following. 1 plus 0 plus 0 and this is divided by the square root of here of course we have 1 again and we have 2 so basically 1 over the square root of 2 which is uh, roughly 0 0.707 and this is approximately because this should be 45 degrees so we have uh, calculated cosine phi and cosine lambda and we know that the Schmidt factor is m equals cos phi times cos lambda so we just multiply uh, these two numbers so 0 0.577 times 0 0.707 so m is 0 0.408 and then we have a very simple task now so we would like to calculate the result shear stress and we know that that is the Schmidt factor times the tensile stress. Uh, so this is a very important equation here. You should remember this. And uh, also this is very important. And then we just simply substitute the numbers. And uh, if you remember, we had 200 megapascals. So this equals to 81.6 megapascal. So what we have to know that if you have a piece of single crystal you apply uniaxial tensile uh, stress on it and if this material will slip along the 111 slip plane in the 110 direction when the applied stress was 200 uh, megapascals then the resolved shear stress on this uh, uh, slip system will be 81.6 megapascal so you can calculate this for basically all the slip systems and do the same and uh, you do the same exercise for uh, body centered cubic or hexagonal close packed structures the only thing that you have to know that you need four numbers one first uh, you need the slip plane and the slip direction and then this basically defines the slip system and then uh, you have two other numbers you have the direction of the tensile stress so let, this is the third and you have the magnitude of the tensile stress so this is the fourth number so if you have the four numbers 
again slip plane slip direction tensile stress direction and the magnitude of the tensile stress you can calculate the Schmidt factors Schmidt factor and the result shear stress in within the defined uh, slip system so I hope this helped you and uh, if you have any questions let me know and I will try to help your problem thank you for your attention